Hi, and welcome to Coding with Jesse. I'm Jesse Skinner, and today I'm going to be doing some web development. Uh, so I started streaming about three weeks ago or four weeks ago. And when I started, I had the opportunity to do some paid freelance work on the stream. So that's what I've been doing. And now that's done. So I'm, I want to keep streaming, and this is my first stream kind of doing other stuff. Uh, it's Coder's Life. Did the stream start? Ooh, pitch black, no sound. That's not a good sign. I'll have to fix that. Uh, yes, it has started, and I can see it too. Refresh, maybe? Alright, we'll see. Um... No sound, I'm going to check on that too. Seems to be good. Sorry, it's Coder's Life. I hope you can get it working. Yeah, so uh, I was kind of having a hard time figuring out what I want to do in the stream because I just don't know really like what I want to do with it, where I want to take it. Um, so... Before I before I was doing Twitch, I was doing uh, I did YouTube videos for a while. I have like somehow fifty videos or some crazy number. And so what I was working on originally with those videos, I was doing like not exactly tutorials, but I was um, trying out new things on the on the videos and trying. So like uh, Chai and Mocha, I was trying to get them working and uh, stuff like that. And then I did some React videos where I was... They were, they were more like tutorials. I was kind of showing how to do that. And then... Uh, then So what I did for like the last whole bit is a series working on my website. Uh, a website for the YouTube channel. F like codingwithjesse.com So what I think I'm going to do today is revisit that website that I never really finished try to get like re-familiar with the code that I haven't touched in a year and a half or so and then uh, hopefully I don't know we'll see how it goes um, so I'm also very much taking requests if any of you have ideas of new libraries that you want to check out that you haven't gotten around to maybe you want me to check it out first for you something like that or uh, maybe if some of you have uh, projects you're working on and you're stuck with something and you want me to have a look with it, I'm, I'm open to that too. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm very much open to do whatever right now. So if no one has any, any better ideas, then I think I'll just uh, work on my website. All right. So I've literally not looked at this in a very long time. I did, I, I think I made one video that I didn't ever publish where I went in and like, added one tiny feature. Um, so I can see here I have some uncommitted changes, which on such an old project kind of makes me nervous. Uh, database, that's probably, oh, I added disconnecting. And then I, I see. So I made like a setup thing that creates tables and then disconnects. And I haven't committed it yet. I don't know when I did it. Let's check it out. So that's in all right. An app. So uh, LSLA. So uh, my username's so big here. It's like here. I just want the date though. February fifth, twenty seventeen. So it's been it's been a good year since I did anything with this project and as you can see most of it is even a year before that really that I worked on this um, I wonder it's coders life have you uh, were you able to get the stream working or I'd be interested to know in the chat I feel bad I feel like you're just staring at a black screen right now silence staring into the void all right so I'm going to commit, let's just see what's in here. Just those and a package JSON changes. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Oh, I see. So I just basically added stuff to set up the database. So I'll commit that. Need to add all. And then uh, here, how about I do, I'll do it in the, in here so it's bigger. And then I'll keep the chat there. Uh, so I'll say new, adding a database setup script. So basically what that is. I'll push that up. So if you're interested in following along or like seeing the code, checking it out, even editing it, anything like that, you can access it on my GitHub. That's github.com slash jesse skinner slash coding with jesse.com is, is the website itself. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. We found potential security vulnerabilities in your dependencies. I got that for like 100 of my projects. I think it was jQuery. It's like a, I'm pretty sure it's jQuery. Yeah. jQuery had some security vulnerability and now uh, everything's broken. So I'll just, I'll update it to 3.0. How about I do that first? Um, again, I'll stick it in here. So npm install jQuery at three, I think you can do, is basically the point. Um, okay, that made a pa package lock.json, which came out, I mean, the package lock.json was invented after I've worked on this. That's a newer npm feature. Um, it says you should commit this file, I don't know. Famous, thanks for watching. Hello there. What website am I developing? It's kind of meta, but I'm I'm working on a website for my stream, basically. So um, I had a YouTube channel. All right, I still have a YouTube channel, and I did some videos on there, creating a website for my YouTube channel. So now I'm on Twitch instead, and same thing, I guess. I'm gonna make a website for the Twitch channel for both Twitch and YouTube. It's actually not for Twitch or YouTube. It's about I'm trying to have a central place that you can go and see all the videos because YouTube's all right for like organizing videos, but I kind of want there to be a, a place that's outside of YouTube. And now with Twitch, kind of, it's even more true because um, my videos, you know, they don't stay on Twitch. You got to upload them to YouTube. So I'm kind of thinking maybe it'd be nice to have a, a place to organize those. Um, put more content in relating to those. So if I'm doing like a tutorial series, I'd be able to organize it a bit, put some code samples alongside them. Just stuff I wouldn't necessarily be able to do that easily with YouTube. And also like having a place, um, I don't know. I, I feel weary about relying too much on on the cloud, I guess, or, or like having my content be only in these silos like YouTube and Twitch. I'd rather try to have a little more control over it in a way. I don't know. Um, does that make sense? I think I'm lagging pretty bad. How far behind am I right now? I don't know. Here, I'll try a little test in the, in the chat. Testing the lag. And then I'll see how long till it shows up in the uh, video. All right, we'll see. So, uh, it looks like I'm answering your question if I didn't get to it by then. Oh, there's no lag? That's actually pretty good. Okay, cool. Glad. Um, yeah, so I'm just working on a website. So in, in a way, this website is uh, not, it's almost like, um, it's a playground too for me to like try out new things and so that you can see how I'd go about building a site. And so... I can try out different technology behind it, that kind of thing. So it's something for me to do on the stream, in a way. Is it full JavaScript? Yeah, it's a Node.js background, back back end. So uh, yeah, it's full JavaScript. I haven't done any, like hardly any of the client side. Or I, you know what? I don't even remember. I got to get this thing up and running so we can try it out. It's Coder's life. You're facing lag. Yeah, it sucks. Um, I hope it's not on my side. I'm getting like a seven seven second lag to myself from my other computer, so. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, 
so I want to get this up and running so I can see like what it is. So I think in my okay, let me let me commit the jQuery update. But actually, I want to get it up and running so I can make sure nothing broke. Um, so I'm gonna run npm start. That's gonna start the server and the Webpack dev server too. I don't know if I still have NodeMon installed. I don't even think I've run this website on this laptop. I think I was that was a different laptop altogether. So let's try it out. Nope. Something failed miserably. NPM run all, first of all. Oh, you know, I have to do an NPM install, first of all. I don't even have anything installed. And then I'm going to see what's up. So I was saying earlier, um, I'm taking requests too, so... I'm kind of working on the website by default, but if there's anything you want to ask about or any ideas you have of stuff you want me to check out or try to figure out, I'm, I'm very much open to that too. All right, let's see if this worked. Nope, now it's a problem. NPM run all is still not there, which makes me think it's missing from my dependencies yet. So let's install that. As a dev dependency, Ooh, I forget how to do that. Add no npm help install um, dash. I think it's. I just don't want to get it wrong. Dash capital D or dash dash save dev. Okay, let's do the capital D one. Uh, I actually don't have any dev dependencies. I put everything under dependencies. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Let's let's move them so all the Babel stuff can go down. Oh yeah, I gotta update everything. I'm doing things the ancient way. Body parser. I don't even know what that is. Body parser. I'm just like, when did I possibly install body parser? What is that? Um, yeah, I'll worry about that later. Let's just move the obvious ones over. So obviously, testing. St Testing stuff is dev. Webpack is dev. Um, all these loaders to are part of that. Um, so then we just have let's see the CSS loader tries promise chai. Those are all dev. It's really not important that I split these up. I just feel like it'd be a good idea. Body parser. I must be using it somewhere. It's funny, like, visiting your own code can be just as mind-boggling as, like, a brand new project that you've never seen in your life. See? I wrote this code. I do not remember writing it. So I was using it to do what? Parse the body, I assume? Oh, is it, like, maybe it's the thing you need to do to have URL, um... You know, like question mark, blah, 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 equals, blah, 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 and URL encoded stuff. Maybe body parser handles that, because that's what it says here. Oh, man. I f this is just so old school. But I'm sure it works. Let's try it. So I'm team to start. It's probably not going to work. I need to install something else. What? Oh, no. My it's a trailing comma there. I'll get this up and running. Just you wait. All right. Yeah. Webpack built. I'm going to want to update Webpack to the newest. Um, everything's fine. I have known one somehow. Okay. So now it's running somewhere. I have to remember like what port and stuff I had it running on. I had a config somewhere, I guess here yep and there four three two one so let's open that up cool I have a website did I deploy that I don't think I ever deployed it oh yeah it's a little different I think that was static and this one's kind of the same I'm not running Node.js on the live one, though. I never installed that. I think it's just a static HTML file here. 
So that was that. And then I, I'm pretty sure there's more to it. There's like uh, an admin area there. And that's like as good as I got it. So add new post. Hey. First post. I'm impressed. It works. I don't even remember creating the database on this computer, but it works. It looks like crap. That's fine. Um, that's pretty much all I had to it. So you can edit to, right? You can save it, and then you can also delete it. So let me make another one. You can go into that one and delete it. That's how far I got. So that's pretty much that's my website right now. It's like you can add posts. Each post would be like a blog post or more likely a video. So I wanted to do stuff like tie this into the YouTube video, um, have a YouTube video URL or something. Oh, I had so many ideas for this. I gotta like remember all of them. That's cool though. Let me just, uh, how about I do some kind of like simple, like I'll update, let's just update Webpack or something. So I'm on, must be on Webpack 1, yeah. So I'm going to go, I'm going to try Webpack 3, which is like in beta. Is that too aggressive? Let's try 2 first, and then we can try 3. Oh, npm install. Doll webpack at two. And that should that should update this right here. And then I, I've done this like a hundred times, but I'm gonna have to go back and read through the migration guide. There, two point seven. Uh just because there's so many little things. I mean like actually it's pretty good that if I just run it now it might it might be able to tell me like what to do different. Like first off, parse query should get a string as first argument based on, no, that's not that helpful, eh? Parse query, like I don't, what's parse query? It's something internal to one of the loaders. No, this isn't gonna work. Oh yeah, so I gotta update all the loaders. I gotta update a lot of stuff. Let's see what loaders I'm using. I need to update Babel, but let's do that last. No, I think we have to do it all at the same time. Yeah, let's do it all. Babel loader at what version is compatible? Uh, let's just assume the newest is is gonna work. And I think all I have to do is like install them, even though they're already installed. It should be able to. Um, it should pull in the new version. I'm not convinced, but we'll see. And Webpack Dev Server. Um, let's see. It should update all these, so. I'm just tripping out. It says here, if I hover over, it tells me what the latest version is. How does it know? And why isn't it putting it in there? Maybe you have to do like update npm help help me npm update. Let's try that. I think that updates itself though. No. I don't know. Is it is it the new version now? It's still the old webpack dev server. I think I have to say like what version I want of each of them. At to URL loader, I don't know. The newest. At latest. I gotta do at latest for all of them, I guess. Fun fun. See if any of you guys have a funner idea, I'm very much open to it. Does that do it? No. Let's try it with an installer. Whoop. Oh, how's your week go? It's Friday, isn't it? It sure seems like it. Any weekend plans? I was kind of sad. Canada hockey lost this morning. 
So they're maybe maybe in third place, maybe fourth. We'll have to see how that goes. Uh, yeah, I think it worked. These presets haven't changed, I guess. That's fine. I don't know. Did it work? I don't know. Let's try it. That's not good enough, though, but maybe I'll get a different error when I run it. Yeah. Can I find Babel Core? Okay. Babel Core. Yeah, I don't know. I'll just do like one one error at a time. Now I cannot resolve style. It is no longer allowed to emit the loader suffix when using loaders. Let's do that fix then. So everywhere I'm referring to a loader, I need to do dash loader. Uh, just those, I guess. Hey, Dizier TV, how's it going? Uh, URL loader, URL, oh, this one. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to get me all the way there. It's just like an approach I thought I'd try out. Oh, it actually runs? No way. Something's got to be wrong. There's way too many changes for that to be it. Somehow. Uh, so in my admin, no, it's not working. It's pretending to work. Oh no, the dev, yeah, it might actually work. What's crack a lacking? I'm just working on my website. It's, uh, I haven't worked on it in like over a year, so I'm kind of like updating all the, all the dependencies, which is, uh, kind of mundane, but it's gotta be done. Yeah. So I'm updating Webpack right now. It's uh, I'm like mind boggled that it worked. I don't understand. I did like almost no changes. All I did was rename loaders. I think maybe it's because there's like new, better ways of doing a lot of stuff, but maybe the old ways still work. I'm so confused. Like I want to go. I would still want to do it the right way. I feel like I haven't done it yet. We'll pack migration one to two. Because there's so many different things. Like instead of root, you have to do modules. So let's do that one. Oh, I don't have root. Okay, that's why. And then instead of. Wait, do I have modules? No, I don't. So how am I doing that right now? Oh, it's in resolve? I don't have resolve. Weird, eh? Uh, extensions. I don't have the resolve block at all. Module is now... Module loaders is now module rules. I, I guess they put in backwards compatibility for the... Oh, I see. For compatibility reasons, the old syntax still works. I see. Confirm Canadian, A. Eh? Did you hear me bitching about... Canada losing in hockey, because that probably was an obvious clue. <laughs> Barrie, Ontario. Do I sound like I'm from specifically Barrie, Ontario? I know I do. I just wonder if you can tell somehow. Um, so i got to change this around a bit. So use. There's a test, then there's use, and then you say the loaders like that. I actually need this exact one, so... Uh, test, and then set a loader. So, like, for this one. 100%, I knew right when I came in and heard the A with the accent. You knew specifically... Oh, you're in Thunder Bay? <laughs> yeah. So, I I find, like, Barry accent is, like, right in... Be like, halfway mix of Toronto and, like, up north. Does that, does that fit with your experience? It's, like... Some people I know in Barrie talk like super heavy North accent, especially, and a lot of them like work up there and have family up there and stuff. And then the other half of people I know like talk like they're from Toronto and a lot of them go to have Toronto and stuff. So I feel like we're right. It's like the, they call us the gateway to the North. So it's like, 
I think a lot of people come through here from northern, southern Ontario, so it's kind of a mix there. Yeah. Everyone else on the stream is probably like, what the hell are you guys talking about? Your, your silly accents. Uh, yeah, I was going to paste this in. So, I need all these pluses out of there. And that's basically what I need. I don't need modules. I don't think I want that. I think I just want it like this. Two feet of snow in the last three days. Oh, that's too bad. We had such a big melt. Like, I don't know if you got that 13 degrees the other day, but we still got snow on the ground, but only a couple inches. We had, like, probably a foot a week ago, and now it's, like, like this much. So I'm thinking it's supposed to be pretty warm the next week or so. I'm thinking it's all gone. I think it's all gone in the next week. I hope. It's been pretty nice. Today's not that cold either. Sucks that you got all that snow though. Uh, is this all I need to do? I don't know. Should I add it to the others, I guess? So, use. And then, I guess it has to be in a block like this. Maybe it doesn't have to, but I'll do it that way anyway. Stays chilly here, right on Lake Superior. Ooh, so we get the wind from the lake, and it's always cold here, yeah. And then, do you get the lake effect there, too? We get one from Georgian Bay here, and it's like... Like, Toronto doesn't get any snow, and then as soon as you get up near Barrie, it's just like... It can be so much. Especially on warmer days, which is probably why you're getting a lot recently, eh? Is that lake effect? Does this look great to anyone? I don't know. I just formatted it there. This one needs to be updated too, I suppose. Don't really know what I'm doing. I kind of feel like that meme with a dog on the computer, but... Uh, I think these have to go... Let's see how to do that. Oh, okay, you don't need to use use? Oh, I was doing overkill here. Or you don't need to use... Yeah, you don't need to use use at all. Well, let's roll that back. Keep loader. Oh, it's only if you need more than one. I understand. So that's fine. Um, what else? Chaining loaders. Uh, oh, okay. Why did they have me do it the other way? I guess if I needed to pass options through. Let's keep it simple. As possible. You love your cold weather? Uh, I don't know. Up till about minus 20, keep your window open. Do you have to pay for heating or no? <laughs> when I was in university, I uh, I uh, used to, like we had, in the residence, we had free, we just had like, what do you call them? Radiators in every room. So we didn't have to pay for heat or whatever. I did the exact same thing. Kept my window open, cranked up the heat. I was kind of an asshole, wasn't I? But... I just wanted the fresh air and, you know, I was in university and, like, didn't care as much about other people, I guess. <laughs> totally worth it. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I want them to show me what to do with Babel, but I don't think I'm going to see it. JSON loader you don't need. Um, I didn't have it anyway. Preloaders, I'm not using any of that stuff. I guess I have a pretty simple setup. I'm pretty sure this changed. I remember there's something about Babel RC and stuff. Maybe I need to go to the Babel website. Yeah, just show me your install. Um, I don't think I have either of these. And no, I'm doing stuff the old school way. So let's get rid of that. I can keep React. Uh, being a vapor, it's also nice keeping the window open so my room doesn't fog up. Yeah, yeah for sure. I can I can see that. Oh, cool. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to do like a stream once a week, I think. I don't know. 
I don't know like what time of day and stuff. I'm still playing around with that. I tend to watch streams at night, like after work, after kids in bed and stuff. That's when I'm usually watching. But uh, I feel like during the day, I'm, it's better time for me to like produce, if you know what I mean. Like this is my work time of day. Where at nighttime I'm kind of like brain dead and don't really want to. Just want to watch stuff. So I think I think that's how I'm gonna set it up. Um, yeah, obviously this time works for you guys, so probably stick around this time. What is going on? Just show me what to do with the webpack. Babel's like pretending that, I don't know, there's nothing about webpack here. Show me how to use webpack. Yeah, it's got to be a time that's good for me. Yeah, I agree. I think it's around now. Usually the kid's napping at this time. He's up right now, but he didn't go for a nap. But I, I, I like announced I was going to stream, and then it turned out he's not napping. But I'm sure his playing in the background doesn't bother you too much. You don't have a sleep schedule? Just do whatever, whenever. Living the dream. Yep. Used to be me, too. Once upon a time. Um... It just says like, oh, that's the polyfill. No, I don't. Want, I don't care about the polyfill. I just want to do webpack. Uh, three usage via config. Um, build systems webpack. Okay, this is what I want. I pretty much have that already. So, are we good? I guess. There's this query thing, and I'm pretty sure that's not how you do it. Um, oh, maybe React would be the place to go. The React web page will tell me how to do it. Um, okay, I'll go to this blog post. Blah, blah, blah. I know all the basics, just show me this. Use low. No, I don't need. You don't need to do that, unless. I don't know. That's how they say to do it. I want to show me your React thing. Are they doing it through a Babel RC? Maybe. Uh, being on ODSP has its advantages, but also disadvantages. I can see that. Both ways. Hmm. I don't know. I, I hate having too much routine. Like, too much structure. Too much obligation. Like, I just resist it. Dragging my heels the whole way. That's why, that's why I freelance. Because 40 hours in an office? No. I can't do it. I have done it, but I'm so, like... After, like, 3 o'clock or something... I'm just like so brain dead and then I just waste time, waste other people's time. It's not a good setting for me. No, I like I like setting my own hours big time. I even had like for a long time I had a sort of structure around my freelancing where certain days of the week I, I'd commit to doing certain things for certain people and I just I broke that off too because it was especially not having a kid, it's just like way too hard to to be like oh I have to do this this day and you can see like with the stream it's the same problem this is what I want I am cool putting it into the webpack config but I'm also cool having a Babel RC so I'll just do a Babel RC file I'm not sure if that's what people do anymore but um, yeah, and react, then I don't need this, what else do I need to change, migrating versions, I'm not, I'm, I'm doing so little with this webpack thing that I think I'm okay, most of my other projects are using a lot of different stuff, so it, that's why I'm like, a bit of PTSD with m webpack migrations, 
and it's turning out to be much easier here. I think we're okay. I'm not doing any of this stuff. I don't think so. I think we're okay. I think it's done. Let's try to kill that. Start it again. Nope. Of course, it didn't work on the first try. Can't, couldn't find preset env. Did I ever install that? Maybe I didn't. Babel preset env. Let's see how it goes. Um, did it work? Yes. So. Started over a project you've been working on for just a week. Eee. Why? What happened? What caused you to have to start over? Wait, I'll just run it again. Mm hmm. Yeah, it works. Not that surprised because it worked before. Yep. Yeah. All right. I was using Java and Java's process builder, and I did not get along at all. So you went to JavaScript. Yeah, Java. Technically, I'm like a certified Java developer. I was certified in 2001, 2002. Yeah, and I used Java. I learned Java in university, and then I did a little bit of it. And then I got a job and did a, quite a bit more of it. And then I haven't really touched it since then. Yeah, I don't really miss it. JavaScript for sure. For the win. Java's process builder. What's that? Java's process builder. Oh, I see. What does it do? That's tiny. Create operating... Oh, I see. Oh, okay. So you're just, like, spawning new processes? Is it something that you could do maybe with just, a, like, a batch script or something? Or, or like, what was it for? Now you're using Node.js process, uh, like, the process lib of Node.js? Um... Yeah, I'm like lost right now. Okay, so I'm gonna commit this. Actually, let's let's bring it all the way to Webpack three. I don't think there's gonna be any big difference between two and three, not that I know of. Three might still be in beta. No, it's oh, it's already at three eleven, or is it four? Is four what's in beta right now? I don't know, but you should check out Sean Larkin's Twitch channel if you're interested. That's he's the one who I think he makes Webpack. I'm not sure like exactly his relationship with Webpack, but he is he's uh he's got a cool stream. He mostly streams at like one in the morning though. So I hardly ever catch it live. Uh S esports Discord bot. Oh I see. Start and stop. CSGO servers from Discord commands. Oh, okay. Mm, that's, yeah. So I couldn't figure out how to kill a child process of a child process. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I guess if you need the process ID, you should be able to do it, but if you don't, yeah, it's tricky. Uh, I want to go to the GitHub because I want to see what the new versions are. Yeah, four. Four is beta. So let's try upgrading to three, which is I should have done kind of in the first place, but it's fine. Um, let me double check if they have any migration guides two to three or three or two to four. I don't think so. I think once you get on two, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it was really tricky. It took me three days to figure it out and still didn't work correctly. Yeah, I hate that kind of stuff. Node.js one hour is working perfect. Did you? Have, I guess with the Java stuff, you have like a build process too, right? Or something. I kind of vaguely remember that. 
where obviously with the Node.js stuff, you just run it. Um, yeah, let's try installing three. I did already. I have terrible short-term memory, obviously. Let's try running it. It worked. Let's refresh. It probably still works. Uh, not this one, this one. Seems fine. Yeah, and I was trying to put it on new threads and then child process of that child were on another threads. God, it was awfully awful, yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done too much with processes with Node.js. Um, I would like to do more with that because I've been thinking about, a lot about like, just because servers and every device and everything is multi-core. So like, and JavaScript, Node.js only runs on one core, so how do I take advantage of of multiple cores and, and try to get things running faster? And I don't know. I usually just do like basically like an exec, like spawn a command line to run some program or something, but are you doing it are you able to do it with like actually like do you just spawn you run node as your child or are you like spawning a a sub process of node and pointing it at a entry point or like how does that work or are you simply just like running commands I'm gonna try webpack four I think I have to say beta uh, do you see that it's like the animation was all queued up it's supposed to be super slow, but I left for a while, and then when I went back, I like did a hundred turns. Six days ago, I think I think I'm good with trying this one. I need to double check. You know what? Let's commit. Let's commit three, and then um, we'll try four, and then I, then I might not use it. Uh, where are we? With status. So I, I haven't had to change my code at all, which is good. New update webpack to version three, Babel, etc. to latest versions. Using spawn to create a process. If you set detach to true when creating your spawn, all child processes of that child you're spawning will have a group of PIDs and you can just child kill child PID. Okay, I see. Oh yeah, I get what you're trying to do then. Yeah. So you're kind of using Node.js as like, um, yeah, I know what you're you're like trying to use processes so that you can have it, have them grouped in a sense, right? Mm. The only thing I really use lately for spawning a, a bunch of processes, I've been using uh, xargs. X A R G S, because it has like this max prox, so I have like a stream of JSON kind of stuff coming in, and then I pass it as I pass the data to scripts, and then because I can have let's say two running at a time or a hundred running at a time, you can just say like max prox equals a hundred, and then it'll it'll handle all that where it's like spawning and destroying it'll spawn as many as up to that hundred and then it'll pool it and then like as they finish it'll start new ones and stuff I'm all about that so the dash is important because this says hey this is the group not a single process oh I see so if you do a minus a negative PID means the group why don't they just do like child dot kill group with a bit. That's such an awkward, uh, non-obvious API to do a negative number. Because I'm trying to run the bot and servers at the same time, so my issue with Java is the server or the bot would run not both. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah. Java seems like overkill for that kind of thing. Um, 
where am I? So I want to install Webpack at four, and I think it'll say there isn't one, and then I have to say dot beta. But I want like beta two. Beta four. I think I have to type that whole thing, or let me. This is the tag, but I don't do V. Java is my first language I learned, so I guess it just has a place in my heart. Yeah, I hear you for that. That's kind of like, I mean, that, that's it for every programmer, right? If, you, uh, if you're going to start something, you pick whatever's easiest for you to start with. But, I mean, I'm surprised, because even with that, it sounds like JavaScript's kind of new to you, and it was still much easier for you to do it in JavaScript than Java. These days I've been doing, I do mostly JavaScript. Um, if I, like for small things, I do I do a fair bit of Lua too. Lua is so fast. If you want something to be lightning fast and you want it to not be written in C or whatever, Lua is amazing. JavaScript is pretty close, pretty close too. Um, let's try copying this. To do list on front end JavaScript. So JavaScript is very new to me. Cool. Well, I'm happy to, um, if you want me to, like, do something that you're unclear on and you want me to, like, cover it a bit, I'm happy to do that. I'm, in a way, this Twitch channel, so, like, I used to teach at a, at a college here, and... It's just such a big time, like we were talking about with uh, big time commitments and obligations and stuff. It's just so hard for me to be like, okay, for the next 16 weeks, I'm going to teach this course. Uh, it's a lot of work. So um, Twitch is like my super casual way of doing the same thing. So I'm very happy to to be a teacher in this context. Um, yeah, absolutely. Fire your questions away. Let's try this. What pack at? When creating an object, what's the difference if I put the key in quotes or not? Uh, not really any difference. With using quotes, you can do keys that you wouldn't be able to do without them, right? Because you can have like dashes. So, here, let me switch to the browser. So, yeah, if you're making like um, object equals that you say you can do object dot property equals hello you can also do object bracket property it's the exact same thing exact same but so if you want to do like dashes or some weird characters you'd be able to do like object um an email address dot com equals whatever but you wouldn't obviously be able to do dot, like that wouldn't work, right? So that's kind of the difference, if that makes sense. It's just like, a w it's a way to do it, and sometimes it's the only way to do it, but um, you wouldn't normally do it unless you have to. You could do like, you can even do symbols now, which is a new thing. Um, symbols are, you pretty much never need them, but how do you even make a symbol? So you can do like symbol equals new symbol. No, I've never used symbols. And then I think you can do like object with that symbol equals test. And if you look at object, it's going to be, it's going to have the symbol property. And what a symbol is, is like, no one else can go make that same symbol. So basically, there's no way for someone else to really access. That's not totally true, but that's kind of the point. Is that it's like, it's not a string. It's like a different thing. That, I'm going way too far, because you almost never need to use symbols. Symbols are more of an internal, like, um, the browser uses it for certain things. They're using them for... Like, if you want a special type of iterator on an object, there's, like, a symbol that you can use to define, and then you put a function there, and it'll be, like, 
it'll call that function for that certain special case. So that's how browser makers are using symbols these days. Forget I said anything about them. Uh, yeah. My style of teaching, too, when I was teaching college was like, I'm going to do programming and you're going to watch. And I just do it in front of them. <laughs> That's like, I'm making fun of myself because when I first started teaching, it was pretty badly like that because I didn't really know how to teach. I was just like, I'll show them what I'm doing and then hope they figure it out. I thought that, I thought they had to be keys and quotes and if they weren't, the key would be my variable I created. Okay, that is, that can be true, right? So you can, if you're doing it in square brackets and it's not in quotes, then it is your variable, right? So if I do like, hello, that's not gonna work because hello is not defined. Hello can be set to a string, um, like greeting, let's say. Then object hello equals hi. That's gonna set, if we look at object now, it's gonna set it greeting to hi. So it's the doing hello equals greeting, object hello equals hi is the exact same thing as doing object greeting equals hi, right? Or hey, let's do hey now and then we can see. It's the exact same thing, right? So that's what's happening. So that is a reason you might wanna use square brackets. So if you're doing like arrays, if you have an array, um, one, two, three, whatever, right? Then the way to iterate over an array is with a for loop where you'd have a variable like i or whatever index zero index is less than list.length index plus plus and surely you know this from Java. And then you just do like, um, let's say console log the, let's do it like this, the, in, the index item is, and then list index, All right? The zeroth item is one, that one th item is two, the tooth item is three. So see, and what I'm doing in here, that's kind of what you're talking about. That's where, an array is a type of object too. So index is a variable set to a number and I'm passing that in to get something out. So um, yeah, there's lots of applications for that where you might be like, it's just a, a you can, so if, if there's like three properties of an object that you want to do something with and it's the same thing, you can write a loop over that list of keys and then pass the keys into the square brackets to get each of them, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that makes more sense now because I was getting weird values in my database sometimes, I think that's why. Okay, cool. Yeah, that can be confusing for sure, especially when like list dot index is valid JavaScript too, but it's different, it's like a different thing. And then there's no quotes here, but it's as if it's quoted like list.index is the same thing as list square quote index. But list square index is its own thing, and that's more like list square zero. All right. Hope that helps a little bit. Um, I installed Webpack 4. Does it work? It should just work. No, it doesn't. Uh, I'm not sh oh, Coming from a structured language to JavaScript is the tricky part to me, I think. I'm not sure if I'm going to OOP or too loose. Yeah. Um, you might want to check out TypeScript. So I think TypeScript is very popular. I feel like it's popular amongst people coming from type languages. So it might give you that... I don't know if that's what you mean by structure. I think so. Um... But yeah, it might it might make you feel a little more at home or like it's going to give you error messages. Like that's the whole thing about types is it's going to give you more error messages. And those can be helpful, right? It's like, oh, I don't think you meant to do this. 
it's also nice for your editor to be able to say, you know, when you push a dot, like type something dot, and then it auto completes with what, what could go there. Uh, without TypeScript, the editor can't really be that sure what you're going to do. So, um, cannot find Webpack bin config yargs. I think it's because my Webpack dev server needs to be upgraded too. I don't know. I don't know what what's up with that. So let's check that out. That's a different project. I assume it's gonna have the same same beta version, but I don't know if they do it that way. No, they're still on three. And three still in beta. Does three go with four? Yeah. So I'm gonna install this one for Webpack. That's like weird. I don't know. I don't know why they're doing that. I understand it's a different project. It has its own like some semantic versioning stuff. But if I was them, I'd just like skip a version so the two the two work together. All right, whatever. Um. I should read what those differences are in case they're important. Um, drop support for node 4, that's fine. I think that's fine. Let's try it. So uh, as for the object-oriented programming with JavaScript, you have a lot of freedom there, you know? You Now that there's even classes, you can go full-blown full blown with that, or you can do almost like pure functional programming too. Um, I have to install the CLI, sure. So what's, I guess Webpack's not a CLI anymore, or it doesn't, they split it into three pra packages now? Okay. Oh, do I have to do like Webpack CLI at version? CLI's on two. I gotta check that out. CLI's on two. Dev server's on three. Webpack's on four. Is that true? I don't know. I guess. Doesn't say anything. It just says... I guess the first release was two. Okay, so they released... The first release was two... And it's compatible, I presume, with Webpack 4? I don't get it. Does it work now? I think my issue, I guess, is I don't really know which I should be using are both function and object-oriented, or just one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it'll come with writing code, and I think the answer is both. I think sometimes... I wouldn't like make a rule about it, absolutely not. Like some parts of your code, even some parts of your classes will be functional. And sometimes it just depends what you want to do. Like really, I've been reading about this idea and really um, they're both, both functional and object oriented are just ways of organizing the code. And ultimately the code you write with both of them kind of ends up being the same. It's just like where the data is. So with functional, the data is like arguments to the functions, where with object-oriented, it's properties of the object. And in both ways, the function gets associated with the data. So if you're in a function and you're calling this dot state, um, or if state gets passed in, it's the same, it's like identical same thing, except for the word this. So it's really just, it's about organizing. It's about, it's not about the functions themselves so much as it's about how do you organize your data and how do you associate your data with those functions. So I think it's both for sure. Um, or neither, like in a way, like, I don't know, like what's, this is neither right there, you know, I'm just calling some functions. Um, yeah, the document object model 
is object oriented because it's a it's an object model. Um, so you're you're calling like there's some object oriented aspect no matter what you're doing with JavaScript. But then in your models and stuff, like this kind of thing I'm doing, or I don't know, certain things is like kind of functional because it's only taking variables in and returning something. So you can really mix, totally mix. It's whatever you like. That's the nice thing about JavaScript is like there's so many ways to do everything. It's also a frustrating way, I think, for some people. All right, so this thing ran, but I got some warnings. Mode needs to be set right. And how do you set it? I think in your, I think in the Webpack config. But it doesn't actually say, it, does it? In configuration, okay, it does start to say. Uh, I'm gonna set it to development. Seems like a good idea. Oh, I'm already in it. So I, I presume you would do it here. So if I'm really liking JavaScript, I just gotta learn the little ins and outs you're talking about, and then I'll be all good to go. <laughs> it's funny because I'm still learning the ins and outs of it because they're constantly evolving the language. Like new features literally come out every year and stuff like that. But um, yeah, you need to like feel comfortable in it for sure. You need to, uh, and that'll it'll come. Like the fact that you're already doing rather sophisticated stuff with it I think is a good sign like I think you're on the right track and coming from Java I mean JavaScript is literally designed to be um, something Java programmers can understand in a way it was like written like the branding around it was like here's a scripting language to for Java it was like it wasn't for Java programmers it was for they imagine there'd be like that Java programmers are high paid uh, experts tucked away in the development room and then you have like crappy programmer designers that take the the high quality Java and install it on the website and use JavaScript to configure it kind of thing. I don't know, I don't think that's true anymore. Maybe Java programmers are paid better, I don't know. Um. Let's try that again. I had some other errors. They're probably going to be there still. No. No warnings or errors. And it still works. Yep. And I can still do stuff. Cool. All right. Um. Is this even using Webpack though? I think, yeah, I think I'm using React for this. It's been so long, I actually don't remember 100%. But I'm pretty sure in my admin views, yeah, this stuff. So if that's working, it's all working. Uh, I feel like JavaScript is the right tool for this project, whereas when I started in Java, I was just starting to start. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, JavaScript's good for like, quick and dirty stuff for sure um, and server-side JavaScript is pretty good for mm, I want to say like long-running kind of stuff or like uh, what do you call it? logistical kind of like I use it a lot for um, processing like data processing kind of stuff I think it's pretty good for that uh, I think I'm like done that part that I wanted to do, which is upgrading Webpack. New update Webpack to version four beta, and I'll push all that up. So again, if you're interested, I don't, ex I don't expect you to be interested but if you are in seeing the actual code it's on my github so I just pushed the new changes here uh, I plan to build a website to track stats for the games I create with the bot cool and doing that in Java was just not gonna work well at all yeah 
Yeah, but there's just so much ceremony, like so many things you have to get right just to do basic stuff. Um, whereas with JavaScript, you don't have to get anything right. <laughs> it might not work, and it won't necessarily tell you why. But, uh, yeah, I think JavaScript's probably better for websites, I'd say, especially, I mean, because you have to use it in the client side already, um, there's some convenience to using it both client and server. There's the possibility you can reuse some of your code from client server. How often that really happens, I don't know, but it's possible. Um, yeah, you know what? I don't know. I kind of like, maybe I'll just look through the code a bit. That was kind of my goal today, is just to get reacquainted a little bit. So I have my express controller here, and I have my I have an API for posts that I'm passing. Oh, this just gets all. Um, then different API endpoints for. Oh, these are like not API endpoints, but web page endpoints for adding. Because I actually have it. I'm not doing AJAX. I'm actually submitting it. I think. And handle request, what does that do? So in all these cases, it takes a promise. And when the promise exceeds, it redirects to the admin index. And if it fails, it shows the error. Okay. So I have delete or update in the same endpoint. Long story short, I'm just happy you're writing JavaScript and learning it. Yeah. It's all about the dev. DX developer experience, I guess. That's what they say. But uh, yeah, things have really come a long way with JavaScript the past four years have been crazy. How much has changed? So now's a good time to get into it. There's a lot of good tools, a lot of good tutorials, a lot of people interested in it, a lot of a lot of excitement around it too. Especially like with React, that's what I'm into. Um, stuff like that. There's a lot more, uh, just whole new ways of doing things that weren't around a few years ago. All right, so that's that. My database is super basic. My queries are fine. I might later on replace this server, not necessarily replace it, but enhance it with uh, Open Resty and Lua. Because I started doing that lately where a lot of my server-side stuff is just, like, a query. Like, it's a one-to-one -one query relationship that doesn't necessarily... Like, how that would work is OpenResty is Nginx, the web server. Um, you've probably heard of it. N-G-I-N-X. And uh, Lua is a scripting language that can run inside Nginx. And someone's packaged that those two things up together called it Open Resty. So when you hit the web server, and you probably would have an Nginx or Apache running in front of Node.js anyway. So when someone hits the Nginx, they, uh, they, I figure they could just go to MySQL directly and skip the whole Node.js web server. And so I've been kind of using it. I've been experimenting with that a bit with another client. Because, I don't know, I feel like it's overkill to, like, hit Nginx, hit JavaScript, run some JavaScript, then hit MySQL, bring that data back into JavaScript, parse it, reassemble it, reserialize it, send it back out to Nginx, to finally to the user. I figure Nginx, MySQL, like, skip, skip the middleman. So I might do that with this project, too. Use, I think you mean LAMP stack for Laravel applications in your PHP level 1? Yeah. PHP is, I probably do more PHP than JavaScript. Um, just uh, a lot of projects I work on are built with PHP. PHP I've been using since, well, it's like, I had to look at the clock to see what year it is. 2018? Yeah, it's been 19 years I've been using PHP. Maybe, maybe 20 years. 98? I think it was 90. Yeah, it might have been 1998 I started doing PHP. So I still use it for a lot of stuff. I don't 
I don't know. Oh, limp? Oh, okay. Oh, it's... What's the E, then? How does E translate to Nginx? Uh, okay. Cool. I don't know why, but I trust it. Uh, let's see what else there is in here. You're only two years old? Yeah. I've been doing this a long time. It, I was 18 when I started doing PHP stuff, so... 20 years from 18 to 38 actually doesn't feel as long of a time as you might think. Uh, engine? Yeah, that makes sense. Nginx. Yeah, I could see that. It's kind of an abuse of the uh, acronym, but... Um, so my model's using Hoverboard, which is a library I wrote, but... I don't think I want to use that anymore. And I'm very, doing very little with it anyway. I'm just using it as like a place to put data. So, and I'm also using it as a way to notify my rendering that it has to update here. So what I'm doing, no, no, yes. Where do I pull it in? Posts. Post store. I'm pulling it right into here. Yeah, that's overkill. Uh, well, on the plus side, I don't look old. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I get mistaken for, for a kid all the time. When I was teaching at that college, I was like, me in this hoodie, like, just look exactly like all the other students, except that I was, like, sitting in the front of the class. And I, I felt like they were just like, uh, you're sitting in the wrong spot. You should be over here. And then, like, you know, 10 a.m. comes, and then I start talking and stuff, and they're just like, what? You're the teacher? Yeah, I still get checked for ID every time I buy beer or whatever, too. It's, uh, I guess it's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> People underestimate me a lot. Let's put it that way. And I don't mind that. I don't mind being secretly old. I have, like, friends, too. Like, my wife has friends. Sort of, like, play group with the kids and stuff. And I think they all think that I'm, like, the youngest one. I think they all think I'm, like, 23 and that they're all older than me. But actually, I'm older than all of them. It's funny. They're all, like, you know, mid-30s. They're, like, 34. But they think I'm, like, 24. And I'm actually 38. Or 30, 37. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> um, so, I have a lot of stuff I need to do for this site. There's not even a front end yet. I just have the admin. And it's like, it's really sparse. This is going to be the front end, JavaScript, CSS. All I have is like the static HTML. How about I update it? Coming sooner or later. <laughs> no, I don't know. That's silly. Um, I need to deploy it. I need to... I don't even... There's so much I need to do. But I feel like I'm a little more comfortable with it now. <laughs> I could run these tests and see if they still run. NPM test. It should. No. Oh, I don't have my test database set up. I should be able to set that up pretty quick. Create database test coding with Jesse. Um, let's see. It did work, but then what does this mean? Before all hook for should let me run a query with params. Specified key was too long. Okay, I kind of know what that means, but where, which key, like where am I doing that? I need to find this test. Post before all. Oh, like in my create table. Um, primary key ID is an int. I don't see a problem with that. Oh, maybe an int is too big. 
That seems unlikely. It could be the slug. But it's 255 our car. It could have to do with the encoding. Maybe it's with Unicode and then 255 is too big where before I was doing it with ASCII. Um, I probably want it to be UTF-8. Let me try changing the slug to 128 and see if that fixes it. Yeah, okay. If I put it back, it breaks again. No. So actually what it is is I'm trying to create the database and then I guess, I don't know, it like fails but then it works later. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's using UTFA MB4, so that's that explains why. So it did work with 128, but now the table is created, and I have create table if not exists. So yeah, I can just stick with that. 128 is a pretty long slug. The slug is like the part of the URL for the post. It's usually like the title, but with lowercase and dashes. That kind of thing. So, 120 is fine. Uh, so I'll just put it back. I don't know. Maybe there's a smaller, not quite a small number that works too. But whatever. Fix. Make slug smaller, so it can be a key. Actually, honestly, the slug shouldn't be Unicode because it's in a URL. It has to be like the most basic text. So I'm going to drop that table. Is that what they're called a slug? Yeah. I don't know where I picked up that term. Maybe WordPress uses it. And maybe it's from somewhere else. I don't know. Um, drop table posts. Now I'm going to try specifying I'm okay with my body being Unicode, like I want emojis to be in there, but in my slug, I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe it's okay. You know, I'm just going to leave it, because if if I put a s emoji into my URL, I guess I want it to be stored properly. Dashed URLs, yeah, that's that term works too. Alright, this should be fine. I'll do that commit. I think I have to retype it. Commit fix um, re like reduce slug length to 128 so it can be a key with UTF-8 MB4. I guess it summarizes it. And push that up. Yeah, there's a bunch of little things I could do here. I'm probably going to wrap it up, wrap the stream up in a minute. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of looking through so I get some ideas for next time. We should upgrade React. I would like to switch to Preact, which is what I usually use nowadays. How about I do that? I'll do that now because it's kind of a mundane thing too. So React at lit... No. I'm going to remove React. Does that work? Or is it React DOM? React DOM, React Router. Did you know what you're doing? You don't know what you're doing. I don't know what it did. It removes. It removed a bunch of stuff, but not what I asked it to. Because I didn't have that. Oh, not Router. I want to keep Router. Uh, I think I want to keep router. No, I don't. I'll get rid of it. I don't think I'm actually using it anywhere anyway. Am I? Maybe. Yeah, I am. Hmm. I don't really care about... I don't really love React Router, um, so I think I used it back then just so I could try to figure it out, 
but I think today I would rather ditch it. Um, but that's like a different thing than updating React to Preact, but it might not be a different thing. It might be related because it might depend on React. So yeah, let's replace it. I'm gonna I use I like this other router called Page. I think it's called Page or Page JS. It's a really basic router. Um it's just so simple. I like it. Uh yeah, it's installed now. So I should be able to ditch this part. I'll do import page from page. And then I got to go to the page site, page router. But so simple. So yeah, you just call it, and then you pass it the route, and then you pass it a function, and it'll render, it'll call that function, basically. So, um... Let's see how I'm using this. So it is the admin, effectively, is how I'm doing it. Um, yeah. I'm just thinking, like, I think I have to have a component. And then, like, to get it to re-render, I think I have to... I think I have to have some kind of component here. So let's call it admin. Or, uh, yeah. I don't have an admin component. But, uh, let me just think about what I'm doing here. Anyway, I think, I think to replace this, I can basically do posts, add, and then I want it to render add post inside admin template right so hmm i'm just like scratching my head because the way react writer does it is kind of nice that you end up with a component that you can render and obviously it's using its own state and stuff to to um switch pages so in a way I have to like keep track of the I kind of need to do this in like a component so let's make one I don't know if this is the right thing to do component did mount then we're going to render we're going to set up our routes and then when this one gets triggered we're gonna do this dot set state um, component will be add post right and then when it's edit slash ID then we will do edit post and when it's the root Then we'll do uh, whatever it is. Um, list posts. I could probably I could probably have a better way to clean this up, but that's fine for now. You gonna head for a nap? Cool. It's a good idea. Um, yeah. I'll hopefully stream again. I plan to stream again next week. So thanks for the follow. Appreciate the chat. And uh, take care. Have a good nap. Have a good weekend, too. And I'll see you next week. I'm going to be wrapping up soon, too. Just try to get this to work. Um, and then admin template. So in my render, I'm going to return my admin template with my component inside. And component will come from a state. 
and then I should have some default state to list posts. I don't know if I need that. Let's see. I think I've mostly got this working. I need to export default it. Um, let's try it. I'm pretty sure I'll have to tweak something. But yeah. Oh, these are all freaking out because they want a link from React Router. I can do a link from page. No, that's not quite right. What is it? Page dot link, page dot something like that though. Um, it will automatically do links to some degree, so I might be able to just turn that into an A. I think that's doable, which is superior. I like that better. Um, oh, it shouldn't be two, it should be rat href. Fix that one too. Um, I think that's basically it. And then this one. Here. It should be it. Oh, there's this one too. I could make like an ink, a link component myself and then have it like a bit more centralized in a way. I don't know. Nope. Cannot resolve React DOM. Yeah, I was trying to uninstall that too at the same time, which is not really a good idea. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to install Preact. Let's do it. Let's do both at the same time, even though that's kind of dumb. Too many changes at once. So, in my webpack config, I think I only have to do in resolver. Let me look that up. Preact. It'll just give me some I can copy paste here. Webpack, please. Uh, oh. New Preact CLI. It includes Webpack. I don't know about if I need that. Um, so I do need this in my Babel. So let's put that in my Babel config. And then I need to uh, hmm. I guess I should do this on all the all the pages that I'm using React. So everywhere I'm doing React, I'm gonna replace that with this. I don't need the render. I don't really need the component, but I'll keep it there um, for all these. And then you can get rid of React component there. I have so little on this site, it's actually not that bad to do this right now. I, I don't really want to be like, I don't want to mention React or Preact here. I prefer not to, but I'll leave it for now. Because it is such a small site, and it is simple for me to do that. Um, yeah. This one does need render. In fact, that's oh, it's not all it needs, but there we go. And then I can just do render. Fingers crossed. 
Yeah, I think it worked. I think so. Let's try it. Out. No. I think I need this slash admin in my router. I think that's part of my problem. So all these one, two, three should be slash admin slash. Mm, didn't help, but I still think it should be. Is there an error? I'm guessing it's coming in here, and then it's just like doesn't know what it's doing. Hi, component. Let's see if that shows up in the console. Hi, undefined. All right, so I need a uh, default component. This thing I wasn't sure if I needed. I do. Let's see if that fixes it. Yeah. Yeah. But but I don't see anything, so does this not work? I think it does. Why isn't list post showing up though or post list? Why'd I call it post list? There and then list post in the other one. Let's fix that. Um, oh, it's trying to hit up the database. It did work before. I don't know. Is it not doing it anymore? Network. Yeah. And then? And then what? What if I just export default a function that's going to return uh, hi? No, it's kind of good. Does this work? Yeah. So it's rendering. Oh, I see what it's doing. I thought, like, the way I'm trying to do it doesn't work. The way I'm trying to do uh, this doesn't work. Do I have to... Hmm. If you don't know the name of it... Oh, I think it has to be uppercase. Like the first character has to be uppercase. Has to be like this. Okay. Yeah, that works. Sorta. Gets me into the. Yeah, th right. So I need to roll this back. And I think we're done. Edit. No. Why doesn't editing work? I don't know. Add doesn't work either. So none of the routes are working except for like the main one. Um, I think I need to run page like this too. And actually, yeah, I guess that's probably right. This dot set stay is not a function. Why not? I don't know. I think I'll leave this for next time, next week. I'll leave it a work in progress and pick up on it next time, so. Thanks, guys, for uh, watching. Thanks again, Dizier TV. I know you're napping now, but thanks anyway. Um, 
yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll be uh, doing some more of this next week, I think. So have a great weekend, and thanks for watching.